I'm Paul Vining. I'm a graduate student here at OK State in the uh, Animal Science Department. I'm actually working on a PhD in ruminant nutrition. Um, but one thing I wanted to talk about today, one thing I've noticed is we've definitely entered hay season. And so as we enter hay season, I know it, uh, beca it becomes a game of um, dodging those summer showers. So we want to make sure that we're getting that hay up, that we're belling that hay when it's completely dry. Again, I say completely dry, even though it seems completely dry, hay is actually never 100% completely dry. There's always just a little bit of moisture in there. But we want to bale that hay between 14 and 18% moisture, especially for those round rolls, because if we go over that, we can risk some potential um, dry matter, some nutrient loss, and even potentially hay fires. And those hay fires are due to some bacteria and um, fungi that actually live in that hay that are on that grass that continue to feed on the carbohydrates on that plant after it's baled. And if there's moisture there, they can actually uh, feed at a greater rate. And as they feed, they release heat. And um, when those bales get up around 150 or above, uh, they can actually potentially catch fire. Kind of that 170, 175 range is when it's really, really dangerous. Um, we like to recommend anything above 120, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Remove that hay from the barn, let it sit out, and uh, check it every couple hours. Um, a good way to check it, to check that temperature, is a compost thermometer. Uh, it may be called a hay thermometer. Uh, technically, it's a 36-inch compost thermometer. Um, stick that in that hay bale, and uh, just you want to watch that temperature. And if it gets up above 120, 125, I'd recommend removing that bale from the barn just because you don't want to risk fire. Hay goes through a sweat. So after it's baled, it actually can go up in temperature and then come back down. And so, uh, again, even if we don't see fire, if we don't catch fire, we can see nutrient loss because those uh, bacteria, those fungi are actually feeding on that hay and they're consuming some of that dry matter and then your cows aren't going to get it. So we can see the TDN, the total digestible nutrients of that hay drop if it's baled too wet. Again, 14 to 18 percent moisture is what you're shooting for. Uh, some balers will let you know um, the, the moisture level of that hay. There's also some different tricks you can use if you Google or look up the uh, um, microwave test for hay. You can actually use your microwave and kind of get an estimate of of that hay dry matter. So it's a little complicated, but it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward and, and doable. Um, but again, you can find that online, um, some extension websites. And uh, if you're looking for a compost thermometer or a hay thermometer, you might check with your local extension office. It's, uh, they very well could have one for you to borrow. So check with them. Uh, you can find them online or sometimes at a local store. Uh, there's a lot of 24 inch thermometers out there, but I'd recommend going with that longer 36 inch thermometer so that you're getting all the way to the center of that bale because that's where it's going to be the hottest. For more information about hay moisture content and hay quality or to uh, find your local extension office, go to the SunUp website and uh, there's more information provided there.